Oh, yeah, these two powerhouses will duke it out in the highly anticipated UFC Light Heavyweight Championship rematch. That's at the ACC December 10th. Mark it down. Please welcome champ Daniel Cormier and, of course, number one contender Anthony Johnson. Good morning, guys. Okay, I'm so excited that you're here. You know that I'm a big UFC fan, but I've got to say this. It's clear that you guys have a mutual respect because you're sitting beside each other doing this interview together, which is a lot more than I could say for, let's say, you and John Jones. We didn't have a choice. I mean, <laughs> not only I'm, I'm sitting I here trying to sit between us. I'm actually sitting here trying not for my leg to touch Anthony's leg. I wanted leg. you to sit <laughs> between us. <laughs> we were getting a little bit too close. Guys, I wanted you to sit man. No, but seriously, you're both such incredible matches for one another. So what are you looking forward to doing differently this time around, Anth, to take that belt away from him? Everything. Everything, I just got to beat this man. He's good at stand up, he's good at wrestling. His ground game is good. He's, over, he's the champ. And when you're the champ, you have to be a complete, complete fighter. So the fact that he's so good, it's making me work just as hard. Yeah, I will say this too, though, Daniel. You did recently talk about your knee injury, and you were hoping he wouldn't find out, but you talked about it, so it went to press. Do you take something like that and see it as kryptonite for him? I didn't know. But well, thank you for telling oh, no, me. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't you Google Thank his you. name and see what's no, up in the news? No, no, no. Oh my no, gosh. No. I focus on me. You know what I mean, Sorry. but thank you for Daniel. thank you for that, that little bit. Oh I'll my take God. It. I thought the coffee was like an oh olive no. branch from you, but now you just. <laughs> Hold on. You do have the Superman tattoo though on your right shoulder. What is your kryptonite? Here, I'll give you advantage. Listen up. What is your kryptonite? What is your weakness? My grandmother. Bring his grandmother. Well, she's she's probably gonna be there, but okay. I would, you know, I, his grandmother's a nice lady. I would never like try to do anything to Anthony in front of his grandmother. So why is grandmother's are off limits? Grandmother's off limits. Why is the grandmother? Why is your grandmother your kryptonite? She's, she's, that's my baby. I, I, she's my everything. So anytime she's around, I become all. Mushy? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You do a brilliant job also as a UFC sports analyst. Talk to us about that side, because some people would say, does that take you away from training? The fact that you have to spend time as a broadcaster, you say it makes you a better fighter. How? I think it does. You know, it allows me to look at fights a little bit different. You know, whenever I'm getting ready to fight a guy, I'm trying to find all of his weaknesses. So when I'm on the desk, I have to really be impartial because I'm watching it as an analyst. So. I'm able to watch Anthony fight multiple times since him and I have fought, and every time I've had to break him down as just a guy, not a guy that I was going to fight again. Yeah. And I think it allows me to respect what he can do, but also be very aware of it too, because it's on display every time he fights. You know, he's knocking guys out uh, cold every time. And we know Toronto is a big UFC town. You know, I was there in 2013, and it's interesting. Just yesterday, UFC uh, broke the news regarding GSP. Yeah. You know, we love him here, being Canadian and all. That he wanted to come back into the octagon after a hiatus, and he wanted your card, December yeah. 10th. And they said apparently there was negotiations happening, and then they pulled out because Dana White said. He's done. He doesn't have it in him as a fighter anymore. He's saying he's a free agent, and it's not up to somebody else to say you don't have it in you as a fighter anymore. Do you agree with that? I was, I was, George was at UFC tonight a couple weeks ago, and uh, he seemed pretty excited to fight, and, and uh, I cannot imagine that uh, he doesn't want to, you know, but uh, you, you never know. You never know what's, a, what's a, a negotiation ploy or what. I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that... They get this George St. Pierre thing worked out. You know, he's a fantastic champion, great mixed martial artist, and he has been a standard bearer in the sport for a really long time. So I still got my fingers crossed that it gets worked out. Do you think, because he says he's in the best shape of his life, do you think he's there? He looked in shape. Yeah. He looked small. He looked lean. He looked ready to go, you know. But, I mean, December 10th is still eight weeks away, you know. So, George, you have plenty of time to get this thing worked out and get on this fight card, man. And, and, uh, you know, let's give Toronto a show. And we know Dana loves him some press, right? So this could be leading up to the momentum of a big change if the fans come out with an appetite. Also, Ronda Rousey, end of December. Yeah. What do you think will happen after a year hiatus? She was undefeated. Holly Holm took her down. And, of course, that just kept moving around, right? It went to uh, Misha Tate and then in, uh, was it Amanda Nunes? Amanda Nunes, yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? How much is riding on her career with this? Everything. This is everything. I mean, she's coming back after a year off and then having to fight for a championship. Against somebody in Amanda Nunes is, who is just so ridiculously tough and so skilled. She's a beast. And she's a, she is she's so beast. tough. Like, she is so tough. So, this is a tough fight for Ronda. But um, she's the biggest star in all of mixed martial arts. Yeah. She reaches people at a different audience, different level. And uh, if she's successful, 
the, the, the train just continues to roll on for. Yeah, you're both incredible to watch. It's so good to see you here, and I love that there's respect because when watching, you don't know who to root for, and it's just me, the best root one that night. Root for me. Yeah. Root for me. <laughs> what are you talking about? about anything I mean, else. you're really not trying to make root, friends with me, are you? Root for the good looking guy. <laughs> root for the good looking guy. Six happens <laughs> December 10th at the ACC. Go check it out. Tickets go on sale Thursday. Head on over to breakfasttelevision.ca for more and say hello to all things Bruce Buffer because he's the best. No one does it like Bruce, right? I will. Okay, thanks, guys. Right now, we're going to take a quick break. More BT right after this. <laughs>